Hi, it's Nell, and I'm continuing on with the Bromeliad series. Today, I'm going to be talking all about the Tillandsia cyanea, or the pink quill plant. So this is a very easy and a very tough plant. So I'm going to tell you how I take care of them. And what makes this bromeliad so cool is that it is a Tillandsia, and that is the genus for air plant. So it can easily grow as an air plant, or it can grow in a pot like this in a suitable growing medium. And it also has this really cool pink quill flower, which is sort of like to me, a cross between a spatula and a porcupine. <laughs> Actually, this is a flower head, and the purplish, uh, purplish blue flowers appear off the side. First up is light. Nice and bright. As bright as you can give it will be the best exposure for it. Um, you don't want to um, have it in too much sun, especially hot direct sun because in nature these grow under under the canopies of other plants so they're not getting any direct sunlight but it's bright so that's what you want to emulate in your home if you only plan on having one for like two or three weeks low light is fine but it's not going to do nearly as well in the long haul if you have it in low light. So give it nice, bright, natural light. Watering. Now, this one is actually fairly drought tolerant. It doesn't need a lot of water. And because it is an air plant, you can just spray it maybe once or twice a week, depending on how, on, on how dry your home is. And maybe once every month or two or three, again, depending on the season, and how hot things are, you would give it a nice thorough, thorough watering in the pot and let it thoroughly dry out before you water it again. Like any house plant, in the cooler, darker winter months, you want to water less than in those nice, bright, warm months. And if your water is hard, it has a lot of minerals and salts in it, then you will want to use either a distilled water or a purified water. Now, in terms of temperature, warm or cool, it really doesn't matter if, it's, if your home is comfortable to you, it's going to be comfortable to the plant. This one is able to handle quite a bit of dryness too, I found, so it, it does make a fine house plant. Just make sure that your Tillandsia cyanea, your pink quill plant, has adequate air circulation. I want to talk about the flower because that's what makes this plant so cool, or the flower head. And as you can see, the flowers are coming off here. These just happen to be gone, <laughs> obviously. And there's one coming off there, and that's how they open up. Now, they don't open up more than two at a time, I found. There's usually only two open at one time. But um, they are really pretty. They don't last that long. But the quill is cool, so anyway, and they bloom, um, if the plant hasn't bloomed yet, they bloom about two or four years after they've matured, so they don't bloom right away, like the other bromeliads. And in terms of fertilizing, these really don't take that much at all, but if you feel the need to fertilize yours, then you could use a... Uh, food that is especially formulated for air plants, or you could do so, uh, something like a general all-purpose orchid food. It has just about the same formulation, and you would want to mix it up in half strength in a sprayer, and then just spray it on maybe once or twice a year, and you want to fertilize in the spring or the summer. You don't want to fertilize them in the fall or the winter. And you just have to be careful with anything not to over fertilize because fertilizers have salts in them and the plants can burn. Also too, if the plant is flowering, I do not spray the fertilizer 
on the flowers. Now, in terms of the growing medium, you can do um, the orchid bark or the cymbidium orchid bar uh, cymbidium orchid mix. Uh, this just happens to be in a sphagnum moss. It came that way from the grower. You can uh, mount it on a piece of wood. You can mount it on driftwood bark, and it would do great that way. Um, you can do it in the kokodama balls. That's those uh, Japanese uh, Japanese art of um, wrapping smaller plants in moss balls and hanging them. It would do just fine that way too. But it just needs to be something that um, the water drains out of really fast because their roots get wet and then they dry off. They, they don't stay wet for too long. Now we're going to move on to propagation, which brings up the sad fact that this mother plant is eventually going to die after the pink quill dies out. It will start to die out. You know, that takes longer than the quill. But what will happen is that an offset, a uh, pup, um, offshoot, a baby, whatever you want to call it, is going to appear at the base of the plant. And this is true of all the bromeliads. That's what happens. So you can just expect that. You can either just leave the pup attached to the mother. And when the pup gets big enough, you can cut all that dead foliage off. Or again, when the pup gets big enough, you can remove the pup and you can transplant it. After my Tillandsia, Cyanea has flowered and done its thing, I'm going to put it on the Choya wood with my other air plants and it hangs on the wall here on my side patio. You, you guys should get to know each other because you're going to be living in close quarters. <laughs> and in terms of being safe for cats and dogs, pets, house pets, um, these supposedly are from all reports that I have read and heard. You just have to be careful with cats because like with the other bromeliads, their leaves are really crunchy. These are a great size for cats to chew on. And although it's not going to poison them, it could make them sick. So just watch the plant and the cats if they're in close quarters. Oh, by the way, there is a blog post to go along with this video, which will have all this information and probably more because I usually forget to say something, but you can see it all um, in blog post form about the care. I will leave the link for that below. It'll be on our, our, our website, joyousgarden.com. So coming up in next week in the Bromeliad series, stay tuned because it is the oh so colorful Goose mania. As always, I thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all your likes and your comments and your subscribes. And I have more coming in the Bromeliad series, plus a lot more videos that are heading your way. So stay tuned for that. So let's get into our outdoor gardens or our indoor gardens and make our worlds a more beautiful place. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye. Okay, time to wrap this up because I got to get the post office. It's about quarter of four on Friday.